Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at using the STIR method, the STR method inside of our class. So here we have a basic class that reads CSV files and what we'll want to do is allow our data, allow the, the STIR method to print our object here, the WDM. We want to be able to print it and get some meaningful information out of it. As you may have been aware, when you usually print just the object itself, you get kind of this garbage. Uh, it's just giving you a memory address of where the, where the object is. But we can create a stir method that will give us something pretty useful out of it. So the way we build that method, we do define. And you can see it's already, it's already pre-populating it for me. It's ready to build this method. It's a pretty common method. So here, what we need to do, keep in mind, this needs to return a validator. So it's tempting to put print in there, but don't do that. And uh, I put a blank string. Let's put, let's just put sample text here. Hello. So you can see, you can see that's what, that's what's going on here. It's just returning a string. So here we have a weather data manager object. It, it reads CSV files, so maybe uh, what we return, if someone wants to print this object, maybe we should return some interesting information about the file. Maybe the file name right here, and maybe the CSV file header, right? So we can grab these, these field names here, and we could maybe send that to the user if they want to print that data. It gives the person a chance to see what's inside the the data itself. So we can actually consolidate some of our information here. We could do field names and uh, let's put these up here because this is a variable that we're going to use more than once. So now we will continue with the object oriented paradigm here and inside of our init define a variable that's going to be used within our class more than once. The minute you start using data within your class more than once, you generally want to start putting them inside of your init. So now we have uh, this field names and file names. So we can put that in here. So we'll say file name. Uh, we'll do an F string here. And then we'll do CSV file name. Uh, I forgot to put self. Self is how you reference the object itself. That's how you reference this data here. And then let's also do a new line character and put field name. Self field names, and now we have what we should need if we're going to start using our our stir method. So now we get some useful data when we print this object back, and so that's that's how you leverage the stir method for what might seem to be kind of a, a an atypical usage of well, what, what would I want to print with the object? Well. Now you can print this data, and so if you start working with multiple CSV files that you want to read and write from, now you have a very standard class that'll that'll tell you, that'll give you the ability to read and write to them as long as you're giving it a dictionary, and uh, maybe you're not sure what the class reads. Well, you can pull out the field names, and it also happens to be in a dictionary format, so you can leverage this information as well. You could even potentially create this to be a real dictionary if you wanted to. But yeah, you have you already have the exact structure you would need to read the file name and the field names from it. So this is one way to leverage the str function uh, when you're doing object-oriented programming. Uh, that's all I'm going to cover in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.